Good afternoon, hello, and welcome to the Omni Coalition News Show, aka Talkness. This show is an amalgam of strange, weird, bizarre, off the wall, and otherwise things you don't normally see anymore from most news sources these days. During a time of political overabundance and divisiveness, we present you with more you defined topics to discuss for the most part. For links to those articles, the music done by Carrera, and anything else potentially interesting, check the underbar in the description below. Anyway, I am Eosander, and today is Freya's Day, also known as Friday, November 25th, 2022. A lot more energy now than I had with the history show, that's for sure. Anyway, let's jump into the news today, shall we? St wrong one. Starting in Rebel News... Uh, Christia Freel, uh, Freeland and financial institutions are afraid of Fox News attacking them over freezing of bank accounts. In a cross-examination, the Deputy Prime Minister says it's significant that Fox News attacked the Liberal government's draconian response to the Freedom Convoy's protest because of the perception it leaves for customers watching. Let us not forget that Fox News is owned by Rupert Murdoch, who is a raging left toy. So, a right-wing, you know, Republican news source... Uh, being allowed to say, you know, bad things about uh, the other party. Well, those bad things are being greenlit to be said. So, yeah. Anyway, it says here on day 30 of the Public Order Emergency Commission, or POEC, Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister Christia Freeland testified uh, for over half of the day just before Prime Minister Trudeau uh, took the stand on the last day, which is tomorrow on November 25th, 2022, or today, I guess, uh, as of the writing of this article. Uh, during the cross-examinations, Freeland was asked about a reference to a large uh, U.S. television channel, or the, the large U.S. television channel, Fox News, by a lawyer for the government of Canada. Canada. Uh, she expressed that it was significant that Fox News called her out and uh, oh, ca called out her and the financial institutions that were breaking the civil liberties of Canadian citizens over her call to freeze peaceful protester. Tr uh, you know, peaceful, why can't I read? Peaceful trucker convoy protesters bank accounts. So, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, they don't do anything to, like, you know, Antifa and BLM when they're literally setting entire blocks on fire. No, that's all fine and dandy. Um, but, yeah. Uh, like, uh, yeah, so, um, I, I don't know what game they're trying to play here. Because, as I said before, uh, Fox News is owned, uh, is owned by Rupert Murdoch and stuff so this is the left attacking itself or like are they trying to uh, manufacture some kind of situation because when they're really trying to push something on news like uh, the whole Ukraine thing the whole um, you know Twitter Elon Musk thing the whole Ukraine thing again the whole Twitter Elon Musk thing again the whole missile hitting uh, Poland thing you know like what are they distracting you from what's going on because both sides are being controlled by the same people Anyway, let's move on up here. More from Rebel News. Climate change agenda behind new push to lower Australia's voting age. That is not a surprise. Greens get, uh, oh, Greens get crossbench support for campaign to lower the voting age to just 16, following New Zealand's lead in challenging the status quo. Because what better way to, um, to, uh, to get your stuff done than to utilize the ignorance of, uh, of young children to vote for your stuff because they don't really know how the world actually works. It says here, Teal MP, uh, I don't know what MP was, uh, something. Uh, Monique Rion uh, will reintroduce legislation to lower the voting age so teenagers can influence climate change policy. Ryan said it was important young people were able to vote on issues that, quote, will impact them more, in quotes, like climate change. No, no, you're just uh, trying to utilize their ignorance. You know, children are very, very influential and uh, influenceable and malleable and um i mean like you know look, look at look at the, the u.s's uh situation with all the education and all this stuff happening like i mean you know there's this one story i refer to it every now and then and it just breaks my heart but there's this one uh, story out there of this kid I mean, we're talking about like you know three four five years old a young kid um drawing and coloring masks on the faces of people in a magazine and when the when his mom was like, hey, wait, why are you doing that? The kids like they look weird without them. Like we are creating an entire generation so like disassociated with reality that this is going to have drastic repercussions, you know, for the next century. You know, like this is uh, 
Yeah. Anyway, uh, it says here, uh, Ryan said she would introduce a private member's bill to lower the voting age when Parliament resumed next year. She would also push for schools to provide greater civics education. Uh, more propaganda. There we go. Yeah. Well, anyway, for, for more reading on this uh, article, please refer to the, uh, the underbar, the description. Links to all these articles are down there. So, anyway, more for Rebel News. Uh, Balin Kigya tried to scapegoat photographer for BDSM theme photo shoot involving children. What? Uh, following the hundreds of hate mails and messages I received as a result of the photos I took for the uh, Balestia campaign, I feel compelled to make the statements uh, Gallenbury wrote. So that's a quote from her, or him, or whoever this is. Fashion house Balin Kigya is trying to pin the blame on the recent controversy with a photo shoot involving children and BDSM gear on a photographer hired for the ads and that was uh, and has reportedly threatened to sue him. As Rebel News reported, Balin Siga stoked outrage with a series of images designed to promote its spring-summer 2023 collection that showed children holding teddy bears wearing bondage gear. The bears sported chains, fishnets, chains, fishnets leather apparel, and restraints. Another photo, as highlighted by keen observers, showed documents relating to the Ashcroft vs. Free Speech Coalition lawsuits, which struck down a portion of the Child Pornography Profession Act, CPPA, of 1996. The ruling, which came down from the Supreme Court in 2002, ruled that virtual child pornography was protected under free speech. <coughs> what, did, what did I just read? A, 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 oh, my God. What the? I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. Um... Good lord in heaven. Um, yeah, why? Why is that a thing? Uh, like, oh my god, bro. Like, okay, let's, let's move on up here. More from Rebel News. New Yorkers could be struck with 2.4 million pounds of their own feces a day uh, due to impending rail strike. Um, sorry, like, I'm still like reeling from that last article. That is just, what the hell? Uh, trains that transport raw sewage from New York City to landfills in the South could come to a screeching halt as a deal brokered by the Biden administration, here we go again, between rail workers and the companies they work for fell apart on Monday. What a surprise. So much for Build Back Better, huh? Thousands of New Yorkers may be affected by their own raw sewage as a planned national rail strike is set to take place. As detailed by the Daily Wire, New Yorkers may soon be stuck with around 2.4 million pounds of feces per day for as long as the rail strike lasts. Trains that transport raw sewage from New York City to landfills in the South could come to a screeching halt as a deal brokered by the Biden if I've already read that. Quote, we are working closely with our contracted uh, vendors and are prepared to do all that we can in a worst case scenario. But let me be clear, a prolonged disruption of the rail network for trash removal represents a very real threat to public health and safety in the city of New York, end quote, said New York City Sanitation Commissioner Jessica Tisch in a quote to the Daily Beast. Oh, God. Well, I guess, uh, you know, here we go. rice a the San Francisco treat. More from Rebel News. Stanford professor who, oppressed, or who opposed lockdown said he suffered severe professional repercussions for his stance. Quote, when you take a position uh, that is at odds with the scientific clarity, your life becomes living hell, end quote, said Dr. J. Bahatasharya. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. Dr. J, that name, a Stanford professor and co-author of the Great Barrington uh, Declaration, which saw thousands of scientists calling for herd immunity instead of lockdowns, said that his life has been turned upside down over his controversial stance. Declaring that, uh, quote, academic freedom is dead, end quote, uh, that guy's name, said that challenging the orthodoxy of lockdowns has caused him to face nothing short of, quote, a deeply hostile work environment, end quote. <coughs> Another quote here. When you take position... Uh, oh, yeah, I've already wrote, read that. Oh, great. So, yeah, for further reading... Well, I can read a little bit more. Uh, this guy's name, who has slammed lockdowns as, quote, the single worst public health mistake in the last 100 years, end quote, uh, made his remarks at the recent Academic Freedom Conference at Stanford's Graduate School of Business. He stated, yet another quote, we have a high clarity that declares uh, from on high what is true and not true, end quote, referring to the legacy media's only approved narrative during the lockdown era of the COVID-19 pandemic. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, well, that's not surprising. Like, anybody who says anything... Um, now, in California, uh, I think... Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if it's passed or what, but, like, there was talk about something involving um, legally um, removing any 
like, you know, any doctor, any professor, any scientist, you know, anybody of any position of power in that, you know, field of study, uh, if they say anything against the status quo, they will have their, uh, their uh, licenses revoked, you know, repealed, um, like... Uh, their their uh, their doctorate you know removed like you know they're just completely stripped you know so it's uh, it's frightening for these guys let's move on up here from all duty central parents punish child who watches too much TV by making him watch more TV okay a Chinese couple recently sparked controversy online after punishing their child for watching too much television by making him stay up all night watching TV it's a problem most modern parents, and myself included, well, the writer included here, uh, deal with at some point. Kids today love looking at screens, be they big or small, and unless you do something about it, they become little addicts. And it's up to parents to either prevent that from happening or manage screen time to ensure they actually do something else. Anyway, this story is about a couple of parents who decided that more TV was actually the way to win or wean their son off watching TV, so they made him stay up all night watching whatever he wanted. Before going out, the couple who hail from China's Hunan province reportedly asked their 8-year-old son to finish his homework and be in bed at 8.30, but when they returned later that night, they found him on the sofa watching TV, even though it was past his bedtime. They also learned that he had not done his homework, so they decided to teach him a lesson. So, um, yeah. Well, it goes on a little, so I'm going to read a little bit more of this. According to home CCTV footage that recently went viral on Chinese social media, the events unfolded on the night of November 11th. When the parents came home, the boy can be seen going into the bathroom, but upon checking the TV and his notebooks, the couple quickly realize what's going on and drag him back into the living room. The boy actually gets more than the verbal scolding he was probably expecting. Instead of sending him back to his room and saving his punishment for, for the following days, his parents actually took on the t turned on the TV and told him to keep watching his favorite programs. He actually looks relaxed at first, but as hours goes by, you can see him struggle to stay awake. So, um... Yeah, uh, let's see. Finally going to sleep around 5 in the morning. Um... You know, I don't think this is going to have the effect that they uh, that they wanted. They just basically trained him that it's okay to stay awake till 5 watching television. And not doing your homework. You got to, like... You got to punish kids. You know, they do not... Like, children... You know, like... As adults, you can't put your brain in the mind of a child. You don't know what will work for them, you know. But like this, this, I, I this will not work. You know, I, I, I've never raised a kid myself. I'm no professional, but you know, I'm still kind of like childish mentally. And if anybody punished me like this, I'd be like, okay, you know, fuck it, like. Yeah, anyway, let's move on up here. More from Audi Central. Man uses imposter wife to get legal marriage annulled. Huh. A Canadian judge recently cancelled a marriage annulment after discovering that the wife who testified during court proceedings had been an imposter. Oh boy, here we go. Warren and Gina Zant married in the tropical Cook Islands on November 27th in 1999, but split two decades later, finding a, uh, filing a separation agreement that stated that the ex-wife uh, would receive survivor benefits under Warren Zatt's operating engineer's pension plan. However, uh, last year, uh, the husband filed a bizarre case with the uh, British Columbia Supreme Court in Kamloops, seeking the annulment of his former marriage, based on the testimony of his ex-wife, who claimed that she had been fully aware that her marriage had not been legally bonding, uh, binding. Only the woman claimed to be Gina Zant was apparently an imposter. Uh, almost a year ago, Justice uh, Dennis uh, Horty approved Warren Zant's request to have the marriage annulled, which meant the loss of his ex-wife's interest in the man's pension plan. After hearing the testimonies of two people who identified themselves as or via remote audio connection as Warren and Gina Zant. However, the court would later hear from Gina Zant, who appeared distraught with the annulment, claiming to have never been involved with the case at all. Ooh, this is juicy. Uh, Hoare explained that the woman claiming to be Gina Zent had not only admitted that she that the marriage was null and void, but also had filed a signed document stating the same. Based on the information and insurances of the two parties, the judge had granted the annulment, thus ending the ex-wife's right to be Warren Zent's pension beneficiary. Wow. So, uh, yeah, this guy, uh, this guy tried to do something stupid, and you know he he fucked around and found out. So, for further reading, please refer to the link in the underbar of the description. Um, there's a little bit more of the story, but I don't want to read it all. You know, give uh, these guys who wrote the story, give them the foot traffic. So head on over there. Um, let me know how the story ends. So, anyway, moving on to you from the mirror. 
Time Traveler posts eerie photographic evidence of coming World War III. Uh, TikTok users have been left divided after an account claiming to belong to a real-life time traveler has revealed pictures showing that world, what World War III will look like. The mysterious account Time Voyagin has said that we're, there will be another world war coming soon. They also claim that the damage will be so bad that humans will be forced to flee Earth by the end of it, reports the Daily Star. Uh, Alright, there's a lot more to read, so... In a video posted to their account, the TikToker told their followers that, that they are a real-time traveler and said that they were now uh, allowed to post pictures from the future. In a follow-up clip, uh, they then claimed to have photographic evidence of a Third World War and posted pictures that they said de de uh, depicted the start and end of a huge war in the future. So, huh. In a clip posted to the account, which has now gained nearly 60,000 views, a TikTok user wrote, Attention! Yes, I am a real-time traveler. World War III was the most liked comment. Um, huh. Interesting. Uh, so as I promised, I would do, here are pictures of how it began and how it ended. I'm trying to think. So this is interesting. So, uh, nope, that's the wrong button. Okay. So uh, how do I, where's, um, it's just uh, showing these. I'm not going to go to TikTok. I'm not going to give them the foot traffic, hell no, China. So, uh, anyway, but if you want to, uh, go ahead, you know, up to you. Anyway, moving on up more from the mirror. People are, people are only just discovering how to unlock supermarket trolleys without a one pound coin. One of the most grueling parts about going to the supermarket is clawing through the bottom of your pockets in the hopes of finding some loose change to retrieve a trolley or a, a cart as you know, most of the rest of the world calls it, and not just any change, the dreaded one pound coin. However, a supermarket shopter has shared a nifty hack on how to unlock trolleys without a one pound coin, and it's blowing people's minds. Taking to, uh, taking to popular video streaming service TikTok again to share that her satisfying tip, uh, Tasha's video has surpassed 1.4 million views since posting. Uh, captioning the post, she wrote, When some lady shows you this at Tesco, how am I only just learning this? So. Oh, so uh, so she used two uh, 20 pent coins. So it puts them in the one pound slot and it works. Okay, well, I've never, I've never experienced this because I don't live in the UK, but uh, give it a try, British people. Uh, let me know in the comment section if this works. Moving on up here, this is really sad. More from the mirror, a woman left as a quadriplegic after she jumped in a pool to celebrate, but she misjudged the water depth. Um, Dana Barrett, at the age of 31, hit her head on the bottom of the pool and broke her neck while celebrating winning a game of mini golf. After being rushed to hospital by an air ambulance, she learned days later that she had broken her C2 vertebrae in her neck, leaving her a quadriplegic. Dana spent over a year in various hospitals following the accident on June 29th in 2019 as she was no longer able to move or breathe independently. Once very sporty, she was forced to come to terms with the fact that her life would be very different from now on and warn others of the dangers of diving. Yeah, don't be stupid. You know, like, I mean, it sucks, but, you know, Darwinian, you know, don't just randomly jump into a freaking, and you're 31, dude, what are you doing? Grow up. But, yeah, that still sucks. Anyway, moving on up here, more from the mirror. Uh, quote, I've been trapped in my own home because of a car parking space. End quote. Yeah, there's a part. So I can see how she'd be trapped. Like, there's no way out. Uh, a a pen penancer uh, who had vehicles parked outside her gate said she had been left feeling trapped with cars blocking her way out of her home. Uh, Carol Tabry, at the age of 75, a, With a, a Withington local said a parking bay meant vehicles uh, would be left inches away from her front gate. She claims the lack of pavement outside her home meant the cars prevented her from leaving the premises on Hill Street to walk her dog or go to the shops. Uh, Carol said that, parking, that the parking space um, has now been painted over with double yellow lines after she complained to Manchester City Council. The space was among other bays that had been introduced as part of the Christ, uh, Christie parking scheme. However, following feedback from residents, its more re recent extension has now been paused due to the uh, to be reviewed. So yeah, so yeah, they painted over it here, but like yeah, I can see there's no way out. You know what do you do? Like that's just awful. And like, what do the passengers do? How do they get out? You know, if you have passengers, huh? Anyway, let's move on up here from Oopy. UPI. 
Uh, the Beatles cassette return to Texas Library was 44 years overdue. Another one of these things. Uh, a library in Teha said employees recently found something unexpected in the Dropbox, a Beatles cassette tape that had been checked out 44 years earlier. The San Antonio Public Library said the tape, a recording of an interview with Beatles members John Lennon and Paul McCartney, was left anonymously in a book return Dropbox recently. And there's not much left of the article, so I'm just going to leave the rest for you guys to go read. But that's, uh, that's pretty cool, you know? This is uh, the third uh, third time I've reported on something like this now, and it, it seems to happen often. It's, you know, it's uh, half a century overdue, and uh, there you are, you know? Anyway, uh, from AP News, Oddball Six-Foot Lobster Mickey statue returned to Boston. A long-forgotten and somewhat unsettling statue of Mickey Mouse with a giant lobster claw for hands was found has found its way back to Boston. The 700-pound statue was last seen in the city nearly two decades ago at Quincy Market, where it entertained the tourists and shoppers before slipping out of sight and into city lore after it was sold in 2005 at an auction organized by Disney. In the interim, references to the six-foot-tall lobster Mickey appeared, at, uh, appeared on Atlas Obscura, a website for oddball landmarks, and in a Zippy the Pinhead comic strip from 2019. So that's pretty interesting. So, uh, moving on up here, AP News. Not just fast food, baby comes quickly at Atlanta McDonald's. That's interesting. Uh, yes, they've nicknamed it a baby nugget after a woman delivered a girl at an Atlanta McDonald's. Oh, gross. Um, well, I mean, only in a McDonald's. You know, you, that's as trashy as it gets. Uh, Alandria Worthy told WXIA-TV that her labor was intensifying and her fiancé was driving her to the hospital Wednesday morning when they stopped so she could use the bathroom at the fast food restaurant. I went to the bathroom and my water broke immediately, Worthy said. Uh, she also started screaming. Restaurant manager Tanisa Woodward went to see what was happening. Uh, quote, I opened this door, didn't see anyone, but I saw feet under the door, Woodward said. Uh, I opened and she was on the toilet lying back, screaming, then I know how to tell my crew we're having a baby today. End quote. So, ay ay ay. Well, yeah, you know what? I don't have anything nice to say about this, so I'm not going to say anything at all. Uh, McDonald's. So, Anyway, that shall conclude the show. Once again, you can check the underbar in the description for any links you may find interesting, including but not limited to all things Omni Coalition. For your dose of past... Oh, not past... For your... Where's my script? For your dose of... Uh, different, on otherwise unknown news, we stream Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific Time, uh, which is uh, 3, uh, 3 Mountain... 4 Central and 5 Eastern Standard Time, respectively. Anyway, for all of you and all of us, I was A.O. Xander. And until you catch us uh, on Monday, or if you're interested in history, we have a history show every single day at 10 in the morning Pacific Time. Whenever you see us next time, until then, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection, bring five thumbs, and subscribe. Until then, toodles.